Today we will show you how to paint diatrope from Nozer's Marvelous Miniatures. Hey guys, this is Nisa from Denef Imagination. I have a tutorial on basic level for you. It's going to be a dire troll painted by one of our painters Maciej and narrated by Agnieszka. This is a basic level painting tutorial, so if you're new to the painting world, this tutorial is just for you. Now Agnieszka will guide you through the painting experience. Enjoy! First, let's go through our paint list to check if we got everything we need. So we will use black, black red, dark sea green, light flesh, refractive green, vermilion red, park green, parasite brown, beastie brown, heavy red, black green. The numbers of specific paints will be shown later. Of course, don't forget to prepare your brushes, palette, paper towels and anything that you may need during the process. During this tutorial we will show you not only the painting techniques, but also how to mix paints and achieve the right shades of colors for your model. We will start with base coating. Mix your brush with water, dip it in your paint and start painting. Take your brush and cover with refractive green an entire skin of the troll. The safest approach is always to make your layers thin, so it is alright to make your paint more liquid and paint your model with two layers and not one. Thanks to two layers approach, we make sure that the color is put evenly, so the color from underneath will not shine through the first layer. Base coat is the first layer of the paint. It is a very important step. The first layer should evenly cover the surface of specific parts of the model. While painting larger surfaces, it is easier and faster with big brushes to cover it evenly. Of course, you can use smaller brush, but if you want to speed up your painting process, bigger brush is the answer here. And also, the brush always leaves kind of trace. With smaller brushes used on the larger surfaces, sometimes you can see the traces of the movements of the brush. It may spoil the cleanliness of the model. Remember to cover with it all of the folds of the sculpture. Don't rush things and be patient with it. The skillfully painted first layer is definitely the first step for a good paint job. We have a saying that a good first layer is a signature of a good painter. After your first layer, give it a time to get completely dry before you will put your next one. Acrylics works better on the dry surfaces and while painting on the wet surface you can actually wipe out an entire layer of paint from the model. So give it a minute. Now the base coat on the skin is ready. You can see that the color is put evenly with no trace of underneath surface. For now we will leave it and start with another part. Take black red and put it on your palette. We are using wet palette here, so we don't have to be afraid for a paint to dry out on the palette, but if you are using a dry one, don't put too much paint on it. Acrylics get dry pretty quickly, so in that way you can waste a lot of paint. As you can see here, we overpainted some of the clothes with refractive green, but it is perfectly fine because it will not be seen after painting it with black-red. Some colors cover better than others, and that's why they are better as base coats. And when you want to use them for glazing, you need to adjust your techniques to their density. Of course, it is not the rule, but while choosing your colors, it is always good to remember that. The round brushes are definitely better for details, and the wide brushes are better for big and flat surfaces. So still some tips about base coating. Of course, it is better to paint with thinner layers, but try not to make it too thin. While mixing your paint with the water, don't make it too liquid. 
because it can round down the model and make some stains on it. So try to find the right ratio of the paint-water balance. This ratio is even more important while glazing, but that comes later. After the cloth, we can take care about the base. Take two colors, black green and vermilion red, and mix them in 2 to 1 ratio accordingly. Use white brush size 6. You do not have to be very careful here, just try to avoid paint the feet of the troll with the brown paint, and of course if you do, don't worry. You can always wait for a paint to get dry and then correct your mistake with the right color. With bases, there is this comfort that for them to look realistic, you don't have to worry yourself to be that perfect or clean. Especially with earth-like bases, the more chaotic you are, the more real-like the base will look like. Now take black paint and round brush size 2 and paint with them the hair and clothes of the troll. And we are ready for our next move for which you will need a wide, dry and clean brush because we will start with dry brush technique. Take wide brush size 6 and colors Fargo Park Green and Parasite Brown. With another brush, mix them in 1 to 2 ratio. Don't wet your brush, but dip it in the paint and then clean it with a paper towel. When the brush will leave like a mist effect on the towel, you are ready to start. Stroke your model with your brush like you would clean it from the dust. The strokes should be gentle but quick. Cover with it an entire skin. Dry brush is the technique that is the best for the beginners, but still can be very useful even on higher levels of painting. Let's explain in detail what exactly is dry brush. According to its name, Dry brush is a technique when you are using dry brush while painting. It means you are not dipping it in the water. So if that's the case, how am I supposed to clean my brush, especially when I want to change the color of the paint that I'm using? Well, during painting process, if you have only one brush that is suitable for dry brush, and most suitable are white brushes by the way, of course you can use water but then you need to wait for it to get dry again. You can also use other cleaners that are getting dry faster. Or you may think about having a few brushes just in case you would need to change your colors without delay. Now it's time for glaze. To begin with glaze, take the paint that we used previously, that is our mix of park green and parasite brown, and add water to it. The paint needs to be more liquid than the one that we needed for a base coating. It is better to try to put the paint before you will use it on the model. The paint needs to be transparent, but still visible with the naked eye. Learning how to prepare the paint for glaze may be difficult. You need to learn how to recognize good liquidity for paint when you work with glaze. And that comes only with experience. So you have to paint, paint and paint and eventually you will find your way. So after mixing your paint with water, clean your brush and take some paint on its tip. Clean the excess of paint on the paper towel and then paint with glaze those places that we want to stand up more. Look carefully how much it is emphasizing specific parts. There are two main ways to build glaze. First is to control the amount of paint with your brush. That's what Machi is doing. Second is to build the color with thin layers, layer after layer. If your approach is to build glaze with many layers, 
Remember to give them time to dry out before you will put another one. Like I mentioned previously, acrylics works better on the dry surfaces, so don't rush your steps. So now let me explain why we are using the same color for dry brush and glaze. The bad side of dry brush is that it always weakens the color, and acrylics are also paints that to get exact color saturation, you need to have a specific color of the base coat. So to make dry brushed layers stronger, the color underneath also needs to be stronger. And for that, you can use glaze. But if you don't want to, you can skip that part. If you want to strengthen the effect, add some light flesh color to the mixture for having even lighter finish through the tips of muscles. So now when we are done with the skin, we can start working on the clothes. Here is also a moment when we are creating a paint mix. So take heavy red and light flesh and mix it in one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes it is difficult to get the color that you need or want strict from the bottle. In that kind of situations, the best solution is to mix two different paints to create it. I am really encouraging you to try mixing paints. You can get a lot of nice results. Use your mix and dry brush technique to highlight the red clothes. Use medium size of the brush like our white brush number 6 to have more control over your dry brush. Dry brush can be used on large and small areas because it really depends on the size of your brush and your experience. So take your white brush, dip it in the paint, clean it on the paper and use it on your model. Sometimes when you just began with the dry brush you cannot see the effect and you are trying to take more paint on your brush. Don't do that because you can take too much paint and then create some smudges on the surface. Just be patient with your movements and the paint will be visible soon enough. Now take light flesh and use it for lining at his clothes. The lines that you should emphasize in that way are already visible thanks to our dry brush. So now what you're gonna do is to make them even more striking. With some places you can paint the lining using the side of the brush, not the tip, so it would be easier for you to control the line. And also don't use too much force on your brush. Try to hold it gently. Remember that it is not a pencil and that the more force you use on the brush, the more difficult it is to paint with it. The most important lines are those that outline the shape. You can also add some extra lines on the clothes that would imitate the texture of the fabric. It will make the clothes look more worn out. Take Parasite Brown, small round brush size 1, and paint with it the ropes and skulls.
After this, take light flesh and small white brush size 2 and dry brush those parts with it. Take light flesh and use it to line his clothes. Next, take dark sea green and use lining to paint highlights on the black parts of the model, that means hair and clothes. Now take black red again and with round brush paint inside of the mouth of the troll. Try not to overpaint the rest of the faces, so don't rush your hand here.
Then take black color and paint the teeth with it. After that, use our mix of refractive green and beastie brown to highlight the teeth. Do not forget about the faces on the stomach of the troll. The last step for the teeth will be highlighting with light flesh. Move around your model to see if there is anything that needs corrections. For the eyes, first take black paint and with small round brush paint the eyes areas to create shadows. Next, take light flesh and cover the eyeballs with it. After that, mix black paint with water and with smallest brush you have, carefully make small dots for pupils. You may want to try out your hand before you will paint them on the troll. Now we will create wash with Beastie Brown. 
just mix it with a lot of water or another medium and use it on the recesses of the model. You can create your own wash from almost every paint that you have. Because what wash really is, it's a very thin paint when there is more medium than pigment. For acrylics there are a few types of mediums, but water is the main one. So if you mix your paint with a lot of water, you can create a wash-like effect. Thanks to that, you will always have the right color of your wash. The color of the shadow is very important for the overall look of the model and sometimes you cannot get ready wash in the color that you want. In that case, take the paint that you have and create wash on your own. For the metal parts, take any metal paint that you have and paint those parts with it. The last step is to make highlights on the base. Take white brush and with dry brush technique, cover the surface of the base with extra color. And the model is done and ready! I hope you like this painting tutorial, I really like the finished results, we are really curious about your results too, so tag us, Den of Imagination, in your social medias and share your results with us, and don't forget to smash the like button and let me know in the comment section what you think of it. See you in the next one, bye bye!